بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم ایوری ون وی آر موونگ فارورڈ ود دی انٹرنیشنل انٹروینشنس اینڈ وی آلریڈی ہیو لکڈ ایٹ سو مینی اینڈ ان دا ان دا لاسٹ سیشن وی ور لکنگ ایٹ دا کمبائنڈ کوڈ اینڈ آلسو اٹس ڈفرنٹ امپلیکیشنس سو ناؤ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو موو فارورڈ اینڈ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا ٹرن بول اینڈ دا بلو ربن کمیٹی ناؤ بوتھ آف دیز ٹو ڈفرنٹ کمیٹیز بیسکلی وہ فارم ریلیٹڈ ٹو ٹیک دی کیڈبری رپورٹ فارورڈ اینڈ آلسو لک ایٹ how uh, the combined code uh, of corporate governance uh, could be implemented in a better way. Now, the Turnbull based committee basically uh, looked at uh, the different stipulations uh, in the UK system, while the Blue Ribbon Committee uh, looked at how corporate governance could be practiced in a better way in the USA. So we see that uh, these are two different committees, but they do have certain overlaps, which we'll be looking at, and then we'll be taking it a little bit forward. So, ladies and gentlemen, What we see is, is that corporate governance is not something which is static. Corporate governance is dynamic and thus needs to be altered with changes. So we see that the Turnbull Committee was set up by the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales in 1999. So this was a flow forward, what we see, that the 90s was a very interesting area for uh, corporate governance. And in that area, we see that in the early 80s, the mid 80s, and then in the in the Uh, late uh, 1990s, we see that all of these uh, different committees uh, constituted developments and also refinement of the Cadbury Committee and its implementation. So, uh, what we see is, is that the Turnbull Committee was set up to provide guidance to assist companies in implementing the requirements of combined code related to in internal control. So, that was what I was saying earlier, that uh, basically it was guidelines that how can we uh, make sure that these different recommendations are implemented in a better way. Now, uh, when we look at the committee, then this committee provided guidance to assist companies in implementing the requirements of the combined code relating to internal control. They also recommended that where companies do not have an internal control function, the board should consider the need for carrying out internal audit annually. So, again, on one hand, we see the implementation and the rollout of the combined code in, in the different companies and corporate structures. And secondly, if they don't have internal control uh, departments or mechanisms, then how internal audits could be conducted on an annual basis. So uh, both different options were different to uh, different corporate bodies. Now, uh, basically, the Turnbull Committee recommended that the board of directors confirm the existence of procedures for evaluating and managing Uh, key risk. So, uh, just like earlier mentioned in the earlier session, that on one hand we are talking about internal control mechanisms, on the other we are talking about effectiveness of the organization, and most importantly we are talking about its futures to risk management and managing key risks, which became a mainstay for the board of directors to ensure that the companies become sustainable, remain healthy, and continually grow in the corporate world. Now, cross the ocean. What we see is, is that the Blue Ribbon Committee uh, also came into existence and that basically was a consequence of the 1995 Private Securities Lit 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 Litigation Act. And in this particular litigation act, what we see is, is that the number of litigation and the number of suits against corporations uh, greatly uh, enhanced and therefore there was a need to see how the corporations would respond to it. And what we see is that there were more allegations of accounting manipulation as compared to earlier disclosure-based allegations uh, as the primary grounds of complaint. So we see that uh, before uh, the 1995 Private Securities Litigation Act, we see that before it was basically complaints which were on disclosure-based uh, allegations, while after this particular act, we see that it becomes accounting manipulation or accounting window dressing. So That became a main area of concern and also a main focus for different stakeholders and also third parties to see how different organizations were basically functioning. Now, to overcome this particular problem, uh, the Securities Exchange Commission in the U.S. set up the Blue Ribbon Committee under the chairman of Mr. Levitt in 1998. So, very close to uh, the uh, committee which was set up in England uh, to ensure uh, that there is better implementation uh, of the different stipulations of the Code of Conduct. And we see that uh, all of this was done to improve the financial reporting 
by strengthening the effectiveness of audit committee. So, that was the main focus and the organizations basically started moving in this particular direction based upon the blue ribbon committee recommendations and they were basically that all listed companies over a certain size would have uh, audit committees compi comprising of entirely independent uh, directors. Uh, secondly, uh, they would also be uh, independent, they won't be of any relative, they won't be receiving any compensation and the only thing that could they could receive was a director's fee. So, this also ensured that there was no conflict of interest and uh, there would be lesser manipulation through the different uh, you can say benefits which were given to the directors and they would remain independent. Now, another thing was is that for small firms, a minimum of three audit committee directors uh, was also recommended and financial literacy was also mandatory so that they would be able to understand financial statements and would be able to demonstrate accounting expertise and, and that would ensure that these committee members would have a minimum accounting qualification which could be a CPA certification could be a position as a CEO or a senior officer or they would also have some financial or accounting background and this would enable them to have better financial uh, oversight and responsibilities. Now, we, we see that uh, the need of a formal charter for our committee uh, in that there must be a formal charter to disclose the status of the charter. So, that also uh, was incorporated within the code of conduct for all of the companies. The responsibilities and activities of the audit committee uh, basically uh, active in the selection and retention of the statutory auditor, uh, one of the major uh, responsibilities, regularly evaluate the auditor's independence and then have discussions on the review related uh, issues uh, with the auditor. So, uh, the organizations basically started evolving and made their internal audit and also uh, the internal audit department. Uh, and also the board of directors in which they would be independent uh, uh, audit related directors, all of it independent so that they would be like a third party overviewing the different performance and activities of a particular company. So, that basically ensured that there would be better regulation, there would be better stipulations, there would be better accountability, there would be better transparency and then most importantly uh, the, the future risk element was also considered and then dovetailed with a proper structure within the organization and also within the board and then making the board directors related to financial literacy independent and then ensuring that there would be a trickle down effect in the whole organization. So, uh, and by that way we see the consolidation uh, of the Cadby report and the consolidation uh, of uh, corporate governance. Thank you so much.